This is Mac OS Ken. More signs of a super cycle, another front in the Fortnite fight, and a golden night for one Apple TV Plus star. It is Monday, the 1st of March, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Audible Plus. Content that entertains, inspires, and informs. Visit audible.com slash macOSCan or text macOSCan to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Japan's not the only region going gaga for iPhone 12. I told you last week of numbers from IDC that showed iPhone running the table on the island nation in 2020. The industry tracker thinks Apple shipped 15.6 million iPhones in Japan last year. The most stunning part, over a third of those, just over 6 million units, were shipped in the December quarter. That surge would seem to coincide with the worldwide release of Apple's 5G-enabled iPhone 12 line. Well, it's not just Japan, and it's not just IDC. Apple Must has a couple of other trackers tracking good times for iPhone 12 in a couple of other regions. To China we go, where the firm Global Data hears the hum of... Yeah, you know what's coming. They say. China is a mature 5G market, and Apple's 5G iPhone 12, launched in October 2020, set off an upgrade super cycle in the country. The iPhone 12 was a huge success in China, responsible for 57% of overall growth in revenue year-on-year. Of particular interest, global data seems to think the supercycle can actually outlast the current line of iPhones. Quoting the firm again, As Europe and the U.S. expand their 5G coverage in 2021, the iPhone 12 will be ready and waiting, likely with the new 5G iPhone 13 on its heels, this will continue the 5G iPhone super cycle well into 2021. Off now to Europe, where CounterPoint Research sees big, iPhone-shaped things. While smartphone sales fell 14% in Europe last year and iPhone sales fell 4% by CounterPoint's reckoning, the Jesus phone came roaring back at the end of the year, with iPhone grabbing 30% market share in the December quarter. That had iPhone edging out Samsung with its 29% and leaving all other players in the dust, according to the report. While the later-than-usual launch of iPhone 12 may have some wondering what might have been, CounterPoint counters that the late launch may have been a boon. Quoting the firm, The decision to delay the launch of iPhone 12 appears to have paid off for two reasons— First, it gave the iPhone 11 and iPhone SE the opportunity to demonstrate remarkable longevity, selling continuously well in many markets throughout the year. And second, it built up demand for the new device, which, when finally launched in October, sold spectacularly. All that said, I kind of want to put an asterisk by this story. I saw a couple of pieces based on the same counterpoint memo, the aforementioned piece from Apple Must, and another from Cult of Mac. I wanted to dig deeper on that memo, but the link is dead on both sites. So, they said what they said. It's unclear whether they took it back or just had trouble on the interwebs. Folks with iThings are decidedly down with iOS and iPadOS 14, Mac Rumors says Apple has updated adoption percentages for the latest versions of those operating systems. On the wrap rod, Apple says iOS 14 is installed on 86% of iPhones made in the last four years. It's installed on 80% of all active iPhones. 12% of remaining iPhones are running iOS 13. And 2% of active iPhones are running something older than iOS 13. As for the tablet, the latest OS is lagging a little bit behind iOS. iPad OS 14 is installed on 84% of iPads made in the last four years. It's on 70% of all active iPads. 14% of remaining iPads are running iPad OS 13. 
and 16% of active iPads are running something older than iPadOS 13. How tough is Apple stuff to fix? Well, folks in France will know for sure. CNET says new laws in the hexagon require companies like Apple to give consumers a sort of reparability score for devices they sell. According to the piece, companies determine their own scores for devices based on a reparability index that looks at five criteria, ease of reparability, price of spare parts, availability of spare parts, availability of repair documentation, and a final category that varies depending on the type of device. CNET says the new requirements are part of a broader push in France to cut down on waste and preserve the climate. As for the scores, there are only a couple so far, and they seem... Well, while we know the five criteria laid out by France, it's hard to know exactly how Apple is grading. The Cupertino company gives the iPhone 12 line a reparability rating of 6 out of 10. They give the M1-powered 13-inch MacBook Pro a reparability rating of 5.6 out of 10. Really, though, doesn't the level of experience of the person performing the repair have to weigh in on those scores? As for whether such scores will start showing up in other regions, CNET does not think so. Since the scores are required by French law, the piece says, it seems unlikely that Apple will start showing similar reparability information in the U.S. North Dakota, Arizona, another state with questionable ties to tech, is being used by Epic Games to dodge paying commission in the Google Play Store and Apple's App Store. The Star Tribune out of Minnesota says Democrats and Republicans alike are behind a bill that the piece says would force Apple and Google to keep the products of Minnesota developers in their app stores, even if those developers sell them directly or through other channels. According to the report, Representative Zach Stevenson and other House Democrats see this as an extension of the antitrust and net neutrality debate, while the lead in the GOP-controlled Senate said he wants to send a message to Silicon Valley after Donald Trump's ban and removal from Twitter and other social media platforms. That, to me, is a huge problem, said Senator Mark Corrin, Republican North Branch. They basically deleted a president. Those who are taking the victory lap, that is going to be a short-lived celebration because that cancel culture is coming for them, too. Well, it's good that he's looking at the merits of this particular situation. Word in the Minnesota legislature is that Apple and Google are lobbying individual members of the body. The Star Tribune seems to have spoken with none of those people. Apple and Google declined to comment for the report. No word in the piece on when a vote is expected on the proposed legislation. More news in a moment, but first a word from Audible the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audio books. Have you given Audible Plus a try yet? Audible Plus gives you access to thousands and thousands of select Audible originals, audio books, and podcasts, including ad-free versions of popular shows, as well as exclusive series. I like the way the app works. You can browse by genre, by mood, check out some of the most popular listens, or search for a topic you're into. Here are some titles in my library. Summer by Edith Wharton, because I like Edith Wharton. Get off my back. Bram Stoker's Dracula, performed by Alan Cumming and Tim Curry. That one is only available from Audible. And Bluebird Memories, part of the Audible original series, Words Plus Music, featuring Common. Authors you know, topics you're into... Or maybe you're looking for something completely new. Audible Plus is a fun, low-risk way to explore. Actually, you can check it out with no risk. Visit audible.com slash macOSCan or text macOSCan to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. Audible.com slash macOSCan or text macOSCan to 500-500. Whether you're looking to strengthen skills, be more informed, or just be entertained, Audible Plus has tons of titles for you. 
Visit audible.com slash macOSCan or text macOSCan to 500 500 to start your free 30 day trial. Apple Music is giving its wares a bit of context. Apple Insider says Cupertino's audio streamer has launched a new section of the service called Behind the Songs. Probably because Behind the Music used to be a VH1 thing, right? At its simplest, the piece says the Behind the Songs hub highlights the songwriters and musicians who create your favorite music. Visit the landing page, though, and it's kind of tough to tell what's going on. There are a few interview shows featured, as well as some videos of performers talking about particular songs. Mostly it seems to be a bunch of curated playlists, though, which is less behind the songs and more... and more songs. While the whole thing seems a bit incoherent, there are some interviews with some interesting people that I do want to check out. I don't know, maybe it's like an old issue of Rolling Stone. You may not see what you want on the cover, but there's lots of great stuff if you flip through. If you want to check it out, the best way to do so is to go to Apple Music and search for Behind the Songs. It feels fairly safe to say that streaming music has won, at least it has here in the States. Engadget has 2020 revenue numbers from the Recording Industry Association of America, Those had overall recorded music revenue growing by 9.2% to $12.2 billion in 2020, according to the report. Most of that, 83%, came from streaming services. Those generated $10.1 billion in revenue last year, up from $8.9 billion in 2019. The top two players will come as no surprise. Spotify and Apple Music were the biggest contributors, according to the report, generating $7 billion in revenue between the two of them. The appetite for owning music continues to drop, with downloads and CDs still on the slide. Bucking that trend, though, another big year for vinyl. According to Engadget, sales of the format increased by 29.2% year-over-year to $619.6 million. That's particularly impressive when you consider record shops had to close for most of last year. The Apple TV Plus series Shining Girls has picked up a guy. Apple Insider says Narcos star Wagner Mora has joined the cast. Background on the series, Apple Insider says Shining Girls is a metaphysical time travel thriller based on Lauren Buke's 2013 best-selling novel. The story revolves around a Depression-era drifter who discovers a key to a house that unlocks the different eras in Chicago's history. In order to travel through the portal, however, he must murder women burning with potential. Elizabeth Moss of Mad Men and The Handmaid's Tale is one of the show's leads. Mora is the other. Moss will play a reporter who was attacked by the time-traveling bad guy. Mora will play a reporter following news of copycat attacks. No word on a release date for the series. If you can't wait to see Masters of the Air, well, you're going to have to. But we have news about it anyway iDownload blog says we first heard about this spiritual successor to the HBO series Band of Brothers in October of 2019. That's when it was announced that the Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg produced limited series would make its home on Apple TV+. Now there's news on a couple of players. Citing a piece from Deadline, iDownload blog says Austin Butler and Callum Turner have signed on to the series. Butler, you know, from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and the series The Shannara Chronicles. Turner, on the other hand, you've seen in Green Room and the Fantastic Beast films. Based on the book by David L. Miller, according to iDownload blog, Masters of the Air is said to follow the true, deeply personal story of the American bomber boys in World War II who brought the war to Hitler's doorstep. Hanks didn't have to look far to find Butler... He's playing Elvis Presley to Hank's Colonel Tom Parker in an as-yet-untitled Elvis biopic being directed by Baz Luhrmann. No word on when Masters of the Air will start its streaming run. And finally today, the Golden Globes were last night. 
While there wasn't a lot of love for Apple, one actor did walk away with an award. Sadly for Bill Murray, it was not Bill Murray. He was nominated for Best Actor in a Supporting Role in Any Motion Picture for his turn in On the Rocks. The award went instead to Daniel Kaluuya for Judas and the Black Messiah. Wolf Walkers was up for Best Motion Picture Animated. That award went to Disney Pixar's Soul. Ted Lasso was up for Best TV Series, Musical, or Comedy. That award went to Schitt's Creek. Still, congratulations are in order for Apple TV Plus and for the guy who brought Ted Lasso to life. According to a piece from CNET, Jason Sudeikis took home the trophy for Best Actor in a TV Series, Musical, or Comedy for playing the title role in Ted Lasso. Believe. Coming up in a few minutes, Shelly Brisbane is back in the house for a full week of shows and in the clubhouse for today's show. She'll give us the lowdown on Clubhouse, the ephemeral audio chat app that's got the attention of tech luminaries like Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Andreessen, and other people not named Mark. It's also got quite a few security concerns. Clubhouse. It's news to Shelly Brisbane in a few minutes. Look for that show and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Can Live goes live again today, 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern, on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash kenray. Be there when it happens or grab the audio podcast later. Look for Mac OS Can Live wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me and sponsored by Audible Plus. Visit audible.com slash macOSCan or text macOSCan to 500 500 to start your free 30 day trial. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at BackbeatMedia.com, you can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.